These days, it's easy to get hold of all kinds of foods at an affordable price. Back in the day, however, some of the dishes and ingredients we take for granted were enjoyed exclusively by the rich and powerful. These are the common foods only rich people used to eat. Salt may be a staple part of the modern diet, but in the medieval period, it was much harder to get hold of. During feasts and banquets, all the salt would be contained in a special salt cellar and placed near the higher end of the table, where the wealthiest of the nobles and royals ate. This practice gave rise to the expression above the salt, which is used today to describe somebody of particularly high social standing. There's a good chance you've got a tub of it in your freezer right now, but for most of its existence, being able to enjoy ice cream was a very special privilege. Its predecessor, which was little more than flavored snow, was acquired by the wealthiest ancients at great difficulty. For example, the Roman Emperor Nero Claudius Caesar would send his servants high up into the mountains in order to retrieve it. Even as late as the 19th century, ice cream, then called fancy ices, were created painstakingly by expert cooks for the enjoyment of the aristocracy. Before long, however, the invention of the hand-cranked freezer and other technological advancements meant that ice cream became readily available to others. A surge in popularity after the end of World War II then turned it into the beloved dessert we know today. Yes, sirree, no matter what flavor, there's nothing so lip-smacking good as delicious Borden's ice cream. Today, no kitchen is complete without a rack adorned with herbs, spices, and seasonings. In medieval times, however, spices were an exotic rarity afforded only to the very privileged. This is because most of them came from Asia, meaning that Western traders had to travel vast distances to acquire them. As a result, they were often extraordinarily expensive. In the 14th century, nutmeg was more valuable than gold, and even aristocrats found it difficult to acquire some of the rarer and pricier spices. The wealth that could be shifted through trading these ingredients led to the establishment of lucrative trade routes, monopolies, and eventually, whole empires. Indeed, it's not a stretch to say that much of history was built on the exchange and acquisition of spices. Although what kind you'd eat and how much you could get varied a lot, the consumption of meat has been pretty uniform across history. That is to say that, generally, both rich and poor have always eaten some kind of meat in their diets. One of the few exceptions, however, can be found in ancient Greece, where most people ate predominantly vegetarian food. Only the wealthy could afford a regular diet of meat. The Romans consumed more meat than the Greeks, with the poor tending towards ham, bacon, and sausages. But certain meats, such as beef, lamb, and finer cuts of pork, were saved exclusively for those who could afford them. Wild game, despite being relatively common today, was also considered an exotic delicacy. For much of English history, meat was widely available to lords, peasants, gentry, and kings alike. The biggest exception, however, was venison. After the Norman Conquest in 1066, whole tracts of land in England were granted royal status under forest law, meaning that only the king and his chosen entourage was allowed to hunt in them. Subsequently, the so-called beasts of the forest, which included deer, became property of the crown. These laws were subsequently enforced for hundreds of years, meaning venison was only ever available to the king, whoever was lucky enough to dine at court, certain landowners, and the very bravest of poachers. Today, venison is still more expensive than many meats, but at least you won't be hanged for eating it. Ah! Now we see the violence inherent in the system! Shut up! Oh, come and see the violence inherent in the system! Help! Help! I'm being repressed! Throughout history, fruit has almost always been unobtainable by the lower classes. In both the Roman and Egyptian eras, for example, most fruits tended to be expensive, 
and were usually enjoyed by those who ranked higher on the social ladder. Even at other times, there have been a few prized fruits which none but the richest could acquire. In the 18th century, when global trade routes meant fruit was more easily accessible than ever, pineapple was still seen as a rare delicacy, and a single one could cost the equivalent of $8,000 today. There are even some records of socialites renting pineapples to display them at parties, just so they could impress their friends and family. At some points in history, fish has been a food for all. In fact, a law was even introduced by Elizabeth I in 1563 that forced people to eat it on certain days of the week. This hasn't always been the case, though. For example, fish was seen as a luxury in ancient Greece, despite that civilization's close proximity to the sea. In Rome, too, fresh fish was incredibly expensive because of the city's distance from the coast, although salted and smoked fish was more common among the poor. Even just before Elizabeth the first time, a menu for Henry VIII has demonstrated that certain types of fish, such as salmon, haddock, and trout, were exclusively eaten by the rich. Ah, the French champagne has always been celebrated for its excellence. If you're lucky, you could probably go out right now and find a decent bottle of sparkling wine for under $10. And thanks to the supermarket economy, even some champagnes can be just as cheap. However, even sparkling wine's relative prestige today does little justice to the esteem in which it was once held. Action, please. Ah, the French champagne has always been celebrated for its excellence. Champagne, of course, was the most prestigious of all. After its creation by Dom Perignon in the 17th century, it became the favored drink of the French monarchy, being served at coronations and eventually becoming fashionable among other European aristocrats. During the early 20th century, however, consumption of champagne spread beyond the nobility, and after 1945, it began to reach other social circles. Imitators soon appeared, and now sparkling wine is as commonplace outside the aristocracy as any other wine, even if it's still a little more expensive. Action awesome, please. Just do anything? No, it's a, sorry, cut. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about the finest foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.